All right. It's five after you want, want me to jump in. And then as people come in, I will um, just let them in. Yeah. Keep letting them in. Um, yeah. If you have questions, if you want to type them in the chat and we can be checking that. Um, Dennis, can you help me check that? I sure will. I've got it up. I'm ready to go. So as we're rolling, like I said, I'll go for five, 10 minutes. Um, just my background in it. And then we can open up to Q and a. So I'm not the world's most famous TikToker. TikToker. I have about 36,000 followers. Um, that may sound like a ton to some people. It's not a lot to others. Um, but I think that's kind of the big point is you don't need a ton of followers to really get genuine leads from this. Um, and it's, it's not that hard to build up a following on it. Um, and the, the why behind it, I think, I think you all know this. If you heard people talk about like the social marketing aspect of your business, um, mainly trust and likability. Um, so all the leads that contact me through this, they contact me because they already trust me and they already like me. So it's an awesome weed out for the clients that are skeptical of what you do or skeptical of what you charge um, and skeptical of your authority and information. Like they just want to hear more from you. So it's by far the best, most refined leads. It does, it does all the work in the background. Um, the sales aspect of it too. Um, TikTok is semi-permanent in how the videos display to people. So um, it's always working in the background for me. Instagram and Facebook Reels, like those fade. They're more timely. Those fade quicker, but TikTok and YouTube, they stick. They're stickier. Um, so my videos are still constantly being fed to new people who are, you know, then reaching out, liking content, all that. Um, so that's big picture why I started to do it. The how, um, don't overthink your posts. Um, use, use the process, um, of getting feedback to refine your content. Um, people are so overestimate the negative impact of a bad post. And I don't mean bad as in wrong information, but I mean, bad as in like not performing well. If a post doesn't perform well, it doesn't hurt you at all. If you're stumbling over your words, if you um, don't have the camera framed, just pop perfectly, it's fine. Don't overthink it. Get out there and post. Um, use the process of posting and getting the feedback and the data to refine your content um, and help that iterate. If you get stuck behind the camera and wait to post, you promise you, you won't get anywhere. Um the core of your content, this is what has worked for me, the core of your content, helping people. If someone is building a house, one of your friends is building a house, designing a house, what would you tell them? Um, help somebody make a better decision. Um, I've heard Eric Reinholdt say on podcasts, like answer the questions your clients are asking. Just help people out with your content um, and they'll see a genuineness there and really want to follow and continue. Um interacting with you. Um, what are we at? Four. Number four, you can give away your best advice. This sounds counterintuitive. I think there's some marketing teaching from years ago that you know you you give them the nibble and then you close on the big action. But I think in the social era it's reversed where you can give away your best content. And there's one percent of people that may steal what you're doing and copy it and not hire you. The other 99% are like, oh yeah, I need somebody to do that for me. This is perfect. Um, so I think ultimately you're winning over losing if you give away your your best content, your best advice. Um, there's there's nothing behind the curtain with how I I operate. Um, like I don't I don't share pricing specifically on there, but just about anything else I will I will share and the why behind it. Um this hits back to number one, but experiment, experiment with lots of different types of posts. Um, where the camera is, are you talking to the camera? Are you filming something? Are you on site? Is it your computer screen? All of these have worked. Um, and you'll find some for you work better than others. Um, for those of you that are a little camera shy, you don't need to be on the face of the camera. You can the first post for me that started to do well were me just holding a camera up to my computer screen with my little Apple pencil pointing at the computer screen. And I was just talking about, this is why I draw a powder room five foot by five foot. And 
here are the clearances for, you know, just little stuff like that. And you'd be shocked at how many people need and want that information. Um, so yeah, you don't need to be in front of the camera. You can talk to what you're talking about. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Um, vary your length, anything from five seconds up to three minutes works. I'm not talking about YouTube here, but strictly TikTok. Five. If you can make a great point in five seconds, that's worth a video. If you want to explain something longer and it's two or three minutes, those have worked well as well. I would say hone your idea though to one point and try and get the video down to as... If, if you're consistently finding you're doing three minute videos, I would say stop that, try and refine it to 45 seconds and make a three minute video into four 45 second videos um, and make four separate points instead of one rambling. Um, but again, if you're rambling and nobody watches it, it doesn't hurt you. And the TikTok algorithm is not going to penalize you. Um, if you have good content, they'll promote it. And if you have bad content, they won't. Um, but even if your content is consistently bad, if you have a good post, they'll still promote it. Um, and then two last things. One is talk about what you know. Um, so I'm a home designer. I was trained by a builder, have a degree in civil engineering. So my advice is really practical. Um, a lot of value engineering tips, a lot of site tips, um, lot planning, stuff like that. Um, but what, what your area of expertise is like, have that be the core focus of your content. Um, and then lastly, this is obvious, but maybe not obvious interact with your audience, um, like comment, respond to as much as possible. Um, TikTok has this awesome feature where you can respond to a question with a video. Um, there was one time I responded to a builder's question. He then hired me to draw his personal home. Um, the video I responded to him didn't do super well, but because I responded to that, that specific client, I got a job out of it. Um, and I think that's, even though those videos by the numbers don't do great for me, I think there's, um, like a a behind the scenes aspect where the people that interact with me now know I really care about what they have to say. And so their questions are valid. And the more they're more dialed into what I have to say and more dedicated to my, you know, channel. Um, so yeah, that's it from 30,000 foot view. Um, excuse me. We will open it up to some Q and a now. Um, First one here from Ethan. Any advice to streaming to multiple platforms? I've been considering doing live streams on TikTok, Twitch, YouTube, LinkedIn. Yeah, so streaming is great. Live is awesome. Um, I would say it's much easier to do live to get a little bit of a following first. You don't need a huge following. Like 5,000 followers will get you there. And it's doable on TikTok. But make 50 to 100 videos first and then start the lives. Because live is a very hard way to build an audience. But once you have an audience, the content is super easy. That's actually how I podcast now is I go on TikTok live and just answer questions. Um, and usually there's five to 10 people on and they ask pretty good questions. And then I record that and post it on the the um, podcast channel. Um, as far as multiple platforms go, I would say if you're just starting out, like if you have no followers anywhere, there is reach on Instagram, Facebook Reels, YouTube Shorts, um, and TikTok. There's an organic reach on all those. Uh, pick one and stick to it. Try and pick one and just figure it out instead of jumping around to a bunch of platforms. Um, for me, I started on TikTok. I do find that there's the the most impact there. What you The biggest reach per value of content is on TikTok. Um Age demographic in TikTok, mostly young teen audience. Are we seeing 39 to 60 year old homeowners watching TikToks? Yeah. Um, a lot of the leads are 30 and older. I'm actually not getting very many leads at all from the 29 and younger. I get a lot of, hey, I want to do this when I grow up. What what should I be thinking about? Those kind of questions that interact with me. Um, but if it's a lead, it's it's definitely 30 and older. You'd be shocked. The demographics on TikTok are not what you think. What is Adam Steiner's TikTok handle? It's Burnham Design Co. At Burnham Design Co. B-I-R-N-A-M. I'll put that in the chat here. Can we repurpose TikToks to YouTube shorts? Yes, I do that as well. Um, if you're crunched for time, so I am 
I'm the only person in my firm. I do all my own drafting. I do all my own TikToks and everything. So super crunch for time. Yes, I will copy and paste <laughs> TikToks to YouTube shorts. Um, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. They will work best. Like every platform kind of has a little bit of a culture. You notice the text on an Instagram reel is slightly different than the text on a TikTok. And people that are in those platforms a lot can feel it and will tune out of your content if you're a, you have the wrong format. Even it's weird. So like the right text on a TikTok video, like you know that TikTok text, um, doesn't work if you put it on Instagram as well. Um, so you'll get the most bang for your buck if you do. You'll get the most reach if you get highly specialized. But as far as bang for buck and time goes, yeah, I rep repost a lot. What is Linktree? Linktree is um, a um. It's just like a, a quick little landing page for my social content that directs them elsewhere. So I have like a PDF I sell and you can get to my YouTube live streams. You can get to my podcast or my website from there. Um, so if you're talking about a lot of different things, Linktree, Linktree is a good way to put that all in one spot. Do you want only text comments or live video? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean there. I'm asking, can I ask you, ask you a question here rather than typing it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, you can. Yeah, go for it. So how are you doing uh, the uh, the live TikToks and are you monetizing that in any way? And uh, I have a second part of that question regarding my daughter. Oh, yeah, yeah. You Were you the one that posted on the Facebook page about that? Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's, to my knowledge, I don't think there's... Um, any direct monetization yet in TikTok? Like YouTube will pay you for AdSense, ads that it delivers on your videos, but I don't think TikTok does. So you have to monetize outside the platform. So, like I said, I have a PDF that I sell. Um, but, um, but yeah, I don't, um, I don't specifically monetize for lives. I find the reach though is better with a video than with a live. Um, I do lives often, but again, it's to get the content out for my podcast. Okay. Yeah. TikTok was completely, un I'm not going to say unknown because it's in the media all the time, but it it was for me personally and from a business standpoint it was un unknown to me on, on kind of the reach and how it works. And then, my daughter started selling crystals on it last October and she's made like 150 grand selling from a side bedroom in her house, um, doing two live shows a, a, a week. Um, and it's turned it into a crazy business. And so I've been trying to figure out, okay, how do I <laughs> sell what I do? <laughs> yeah. So uh, working two days a week, I, you know, that, that that's retirement for me. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's awesome. Um, and quite frankly, that's better than I'm doing. <laughs> On TikTok. Um, what what has worked for me in getting leads is specific examples about how I'm helping people. I noticed there was a big market for people love to draw their own floor plans. This is huge. Almost everybody I'm talking to now has drawn their own floor plan. And so one of my posts was just, hey, a client drew this. Here are a couple things I noticed with client drawn plans that are often wrong and I have to fix. So you can work on these in the future. Oh, and here's the rendering I did for their floor plan and how we fixed all this stuff. Um, that has like four or 500,000 views. Um, and I got a ton of leads from that video. Um, and yeah, I, I think for you, so this is one of the questions we got from the Facebook page. Um, content is my question, what to share. Um, and I would say, again, get back, gets back to you, like try a lot of stuff, but share about what you do and why you do it. Um, and you'll see, I, I would assume you'll probably see a lot of success there. Um, like I said, my expertise is on the practical side. So like value engineering tips, Hey, here are four quick value engineering tips for this floor plan, centralized bearing walls, you know, um, some stuff that people love just standing on a site and pointing to a built-in or like a key feature, like an island and saying, it is this dimensions. <laughs> like I've just stood at a kitchen island and said, this is six feet by four feet. And people really want to know how big a six foot by four foot island is. 
Now that might not convert to a ton of leads, but you'll get followers and um, you'll get noticed through that. You know, if, if you're getting 50,000 views, you don't need to be picky about what type of content you're getting. Cause people that really are interested will find you. I think there's another question in here. Uh, before you do that, just so everybody on here, if you are on TikTok already, uh, post your, your handle on the chat for us for oh please. yeah definitely I'd and we'll follow i'll follow on. everybody how much time do you devote to tiktok weekly do you plan it out honestly it's like less than an hour or two and no i don't plan it out i should i would love to get better at that um but usually i'm working on a floor plan and i'm like again back to the powder room i'll be drawing a powder room and i'm like i i think a lot of people might want to know how big this is so i'll just pull up my phone talk to it. Hey, I, my standard powder room is five by five for these plans, usually with a two, four door, um, that allows for room for trim and stuff and just make a 15, 30 second video. Um, usually takes me a couple takes, but after you've done a bunch of them, you'll realize you don't need to plan out a ton of stuff, um, or retake a bunch of things to, to get streamlined with it. Um, another cool thing about TikTok is it, um, it's almost more valuable if it feels like authentic and organic versus processed. So you don't need snazzy editing. You don't need to look like super professional. Almost the more, the more professional you look can be a bad thing at times. Um, so to have stuff that looks just normal, um, you know, cell phone footage is totally fine. Let's see here. I'm missing any questions. You guys can jump in as well too. Is there, um, is there anything that you should watch out for when you go to sign up the first time? Cause I see there's a few people on here who don't have it yet. So if you go to sign up, is there some things that you should not do right off the bat? like in your sign up or anything like that? I don't know. I mean, are you talking about like privacy concerns and stuff? Uh, privacy concerns, things that are going to hurt you in, in the long run. If you're running a business as opposed to a personal stuff like that. Yeah. I, I go back and forth on business versus personal. Sometimes I kind of wish I just made it personal account, like, um, and talked 80% business. And that way I could talk a little bit more about my life. Um, and you don't know, like, I love mountain biking. You don't know who also loves mountain biking that needs a home. And now I'm their favorite designer because I talked about their two favorite things, you know? Um, so I kind of wish I went personal with it, but mine has all been business. And I don't think that's hurt me either. Um, like I am my business, right? So um, it doesn't, I don't think it matters too much one way or another. Um Yeah. Got this question from the Facebook page. Do we need client approval before sharing their projects on TikTok? So I've done two things. One, I, I will ask a client, um, especially like with that hand-drawn one, like it was her hand drawings that I shared on TikTok. Like I asked her if, if that was okay. I think that's probably a good rule of thumb. I don't, I also have it in my, no, I don't have it in my contract actually. Um, but sometimes I haven't talked to a client, but it's something so small and specific on their plan that no one would ever happy or um, like the client, the client's information wouldn't be subject to any trouble. Um, you know, like I'm showing just a bathroom in their house. They don't have any privacy concerns about that, you know? So that's my two cents on it. Um, hey, really good information. Thanks for sharing this with us. So uh, there's been all of this, um, controversy over TikTok privacy and it went to, you know, the higher ups in government and they're trying to shut it down. So what are your thoughts on that, on this? Are we in danger of having all of our super secret privacy information compromised and sent to China? What's your stance? I, I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's going to get shut down. I don't know if my privacy information is super safe. I, 
the way I look at it is it's 2023. Do I really truck trust Facebook and YouTube to be that much more um up upstanding with my with my information? Yeah, I sure it's it's Americans versus China. I get that, but I don't know. My I think all of us realize our information is out there somewhere. And if somebody really wanted to do something, there's not a lot you can do about it. Um, so I'm kind of resigned to that fate. Um, I don't know if it's going to get shut down or not. I would say if it does, I still think this is a win a, obviously because I got clients and leads out of it. Um, but B it's just helped me in all other platforms. Like I'm really pushing hard at YouTube now. And I feel like all this work in TikTok is just made me better. It's like when you learn one instrument, the second instrument is always easier to learn. Um, you know, it's, it's just made me better at it. And so I can get to content faster. Um, but if you're like scared of TikTok, I would say like the reach on YouTube or Instagram reels isn't quite as strong, but you could just double down there and say the, you know, all the, all the content strategies work on all these platforms. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah. What, what, what I like about TikTok is that it's so different from Facebook. I think Facebook keeps you in a cul-de-sac unless you're willing to go ahead and purchase um, boosts for your information, you're, it's almost like they hide you. And so, um, and then I also don't like the whole Zuckerberg, you know, it's he's now got Instagram. So he had Meta's, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. I mean, he's got a monopoly. What else does he have? So I don't like monopolies in business. And I think that TikTok is a viable option. I just was, I was told from other social marketing pros is like, oh, your 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 customer base, it, it the number one is Facebook. They're on Facebook. Number two, um, Instagram for designers and and uh, you know. So I'm a kitchen and bath designer. Uh, Instagram for sure. Pinterest. I never even realized Pinterest was something that I should be you know thinking about. I've got my own personal Pinterest for my stuff, but you know, there's so many to think about it. It's it then it becomes overwhelming and I get uh, analysis paralysis and then don't do anything. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's why I say just pick one. Um, I think you're better off to pick one and quadruple down on it than um, try and figure out all the nuances of all these different things. Like Facebook, there's a lot of reach there, but you can't post a picture. It's gotta be a reel. So it's gotta be under 60 seconds and it's gotta, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of little things, but, um, TikTok still is by far, like if you post the, the same value video on all of them, TikTok has by far the biggest chance of it going crazy value viral tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. Um, there's just still more people consuming TikTok than there are making stuff on it. So it just gets down to math. Yeah. If you create your um videos on a computer or on your phone and you save them there uh you can post it to any media yeah. it's it's not it's not that you so it's it's a one and done um one of the things so so as you all have get probably guessed i'm bigger on facebook uh learned how to grow things on facebook fairly easy um not business, of course, because it seems like my business, I don't do anything with that. I do everything with the residential design professionals group page. That's it. So that's got to change. But the um, the reels and stuff, I'm actually learning how to do that now. It was funny when Adam got to me because I was actually going through a course that was talking talking to you about how important it was and everything. And they were sharing with you that there's a, the ability to, to remove the TikTok um logo and stuff like that which i'm not sure that's an important thing because i can just copy my video um but the reach is pretty good um uh i i i posted a picture of a chicken a picture of a chicken with some some words on it and a little little song that they give you for free and all of a sudden people started liking it and following me i said oh okay <laughs> so, yeah and it was just a stupid chicken. It's it's really crazy. Uh, that was a good question. John Jones just asked, is there a length of time for uh, a real or what is it for a real quantity over quality? Um, yeah, so for 
TikTok is max three minutes, I think. Instagram and Facebook, I think one is 60, one is 90. Um, I, I think I would say distill down to the smallest point and usually shorter is better because a lot of these platforms, they rank your video, not on likes, not even as much on shares and follows, but percentage time watched. So if a hundred percent of the people are watching a hundred percent of your video, um, that the platform views that as a really good video. So it's a lot easier to get to a higher percentage time watched at 10 seconds than it is at 60. Um, and then I would say the real crux of the equation, and this is where a lot of people get mixed up, is the win in social media marketing is quantity over quality. That's super hard. I know we're all professionals that strive for the opposite, you know, and I'm sure everybody in this this chat designs awesome homes and kitchens and things. Um, but to just get a bulk out of content out of there, um, you know, get a hundred videos up, just do it, get a hundred videos up and probably something good will happen. Okay. So that old adage that we always keep in the back of our mind when customer wants things, they want it cheap, they want it fast and they want it good. It's like pick two, you can't have all three. So we yeah. should just go for quality not quality necessarily. Don't when you're trying to make everything perfect, but just go for quality. Just yeah. get it out there. And then and I was just listening to an interview with Mr. Beast and he said the same thing. Like on the 101st video, then start to look back and say like, oh, if I did this quality thing here, if I edited this 15 seconds shorter, this w video would have performed better, but ignore that for the first hundred, just get stuff up. Um, and then once you're, once you're fluid in it, then you can start to, you know, worry about the, the quality. Um, but yeah, there's still a ton of reach out there for low quality videos. It sounds like just getting on and going, Hey, heard, heard a question this week. What should I do first buy land or design the house? And then you answer it by land. Of course, that would be a real, that'd be a video. Yep. And, and, and it would be extremely good because it actually answers the question without going too far. Yeah. So. I see. I've already I, got some in my mind. I, yeah. I want to go through, you know, why choose Rift Cut versus, um, uh, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, anyhow, the two, you know, right now, uh, White Oak is so popular. So you have Cortison White Oak and Rift Oak, and there's, you know, customers are, you know, killing themselves over like the radials and the, in the quarter sun and, you know, and then Rift Cut is about, I don't know, some, some brands it's about 20% higher. So um, th those are the things that I could go for. I think I've got my handle picked. I'm going to be the cabinet gal because I'm all about the nuts and bolts of cabinet. So I just through this process, I figured it out. So yeah, watch me. <laughs> I, I, as you were talking, like I would watch that video. Yeah. Um, and you had a good picture of the flooring side by side. The yeah. I actually made one for my customer. I just took my phone, got out two samples, two door samples side by side. And it was just, you know, comparing and contrasting and saying, you know, if this is really going to bother you, then go for the rift cut. But still, you have to keep in mind, it's from mother, from mother nature. It's not going to be perfect. If you're looking for straight lines on your wood, then please let's look at the textured laminates because then we can get you consistency. So, yeah. Okay. Now I'm um, inspired. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the rift cut versus quarter sawn, I could see as three videos. One is like a vote video. What do you prefer? Rift cut or quarter yeah. sawn? And then um, two are like the pros and cons of rift cut versus quarter sawn. And then three is I always choose X because of X, Y, and Z. Um, and that's just like, that's the most finite detail. You know, you can see how easy it is to start developing content. And then all um, of us can do reaction videos to what our other, our, yeah. Yeah counterparts and do a reaction video of what we think about it. Um, also what I've noticed, um, cause I follow along and watch, you know, some of the, I, I watch TikTokers, TikTokers, but I don't do anything with it. I noticed that they put out as uh, like part one, part two. So then of course I'm looking for part two, cause I want to <laughs> hear the rest of the story. So even if you have a reel that's, uh, you know, two minutes or three minutes, I still go and look for part two. Cause it's like, Oh wait, they left me hanging. I have to hear more. Yeah. <laughs> Um, got this question. Do you edit in the app or use a video editing software or just organic no edits? 
I do very little editing. This is, again, gets back to like, I'm running a business. I need the most value for my time. And that is very simple. No edits. I've played with some where I've edited them more and they've just never done well. So I'm like, one cut, we're just doing this. If I stumble on a word or um, one of my TikTok videos, I like was talking about something in the kitchen and almost fell over. And then I said, oh, I almost fell over there. And I left it in. I'm like, you know, it's fine. Nobody cares. Um, so yeah. Just there is this one TikToker there. called The Mothership. I'll put it in the chat. Okay. And she offers these amazing tips on in stuff that I wouldn't even, I don't have time to get into all the crazy video edits and stuff like that. But if you're looking for somebody to give you, um, you know, give you your training wheels, she'll, she's awesome. So I will type her name in the chat. Yeah. I come from a, uh, a background. Uh, I used to professionally edit video. Um, I hate being in front of the camera, but I love to edit it. <laughs> um, but I had, I haven't done it in 20 some years, but, uh, I got back on for, um, YouTube videos. Uh, and I've put very few on most, most of them are from these webinars, but I wanted to make it so that it was, it was something people wanted to watch. And I realized very quickly that, that if you have something that you introduce your video with all the time, the same, and you exit your video all the time the same you could take your your unedited video from tiktok add those to it and it becomes a uh a, a youtube video within and it takes you maybe 20 seconds mm -hmm. so yeah. so if you're worried about editing use that for something that's going to be more refined like youtube facebook linkedin something like that if you're worried about just getting views i think tiktok not editing is, is, is an amazing, uh, amazing piece of advice. That was good. If you're looking for content ideas, I actually just asked chat GBT this week and there's a lot of great content ideas there. Um, I got to get on that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> or if you, I am going to share my screen actually. Okay. Work. Yeah, let me make sure that you're able to. Um, oh, yeah, it's been disabled. There's one way you can Google it and find the top other questions, similar questions people are ahead. Googling. I think you can now. Okay. So let's see here. Okay. So let's just search like custom home design. Um, So you scroll down to these people also ask all these can be TikTok videos. And then as you hit more down arrows, more options pop up huh. and just start answering these questions. And you know, there's going to be traffic there because this is what Google is telling mm -hmm. you. People are Googling. Um, and you know, not all these might be great content, but that's a really good list of, of stuff to get you started. My original barometer was if someone says, huh, I didn't know that. Or, oh, that's interesting to you in a meeting. It's worth a TikTok. Um, I have a question actually regarding, <clears throat> excuse me, um, like I mentioned doing live streams, uh, one of the reasons I haven't started yet, I've been kind of figuring how do I market it to, you know, the general audience where like, let's say, for example, I mean, I watch 10, 15 different architects on YouTube, um, but they're all, you know, making videos for other people like us and other architects to kind of understand. Mm -hmm. Um. So you want to market more toward people yeah, like how like the potential client yeah um i would say like more specifics about living in the home and less about the process of designing a home like i always do my kitchen walkways at four feet because i found when you open the dishwasher on one side and the oven on the other side they're not banging into each other or you know a video like that then people you know, it's all stuff that us in this room know, but somebody who's in the process is thinking about, um, or I didn't know I needed to think about that. And now I do. Those are great videos. 
Um, so yeah, more just client facing stuff, more specifics about livability. Um, Dennis's idea, like, should you buy a lot or a plan first? You know, that's a great one. We all know the answer to that. No, no clients know the answer to that. Ever. Um, yeah. <laughs> Adam, I'd like to tag onto that for, you know, I, I think also marketing to where your customer base is. And, you know, if it's, you know, owner builders, there's a bunch of owner builder Facebook groups. You know, hey, we're going to be doing a talk about this and, and, and you know, post links in those groups. Um, if it's local, um, you know, local groups, lo local to your city, things like that. I, I think those are some ways that you can organically help you know, grow some of that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, should definitely. We be using hashtags? Kind of cross promote. Yeah. yeah. Should we be using hashtags in our, in the TikTok posts? Yes. Use hashtags. Um, I would say five to 10, you don't need to go crazy. Um, sometimes even two or three, like the algorithm will figure it out. Um, you just need to help it along a little bit. Um, but Yeah. And then Robert, uh, this again, I, I keep going back to TikTok, but like, this is a cool thing about TikTok as like your target audience. I never defined or had a target audience. I just talked about what I knew. And then magically the intersection, like all the leads I'm getting are builders and people that want to draw their own floor, floor plan, but need some help with it. Um, and that's the stuff that I really know and talk about a lot. You know, so like the volume of people and the reach is there enough where TikTok does all that work for you. You know, they're getting you in front of your target audience because you're talking about the stuff that you know and the audience you want to target. Yeah. And I'm at the point now where I, um, Dennis and I are working on a, 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 a presentation similar to this here in probably the next few weeks. I specialize in designing with ICFs, the insulated concrete forms. Oh, cool. I will be going to that one. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, I'm the admin moderator for uh, three of the largest ICF uh, groups on Facebook. I've, you know, and, and I've, that is where, I mean, it got to the point where, you know, I have, I have two groups that are have over, have over 10, you know, almost 10,000 members in each one. And we had to create an ICF pro group so the pros could get away from the homeowners asking, you know, you know, how to build questions. And what that's turned into in the last two years is, is this organic, you know, resource for, you know, for me and, and several other designers that are also in that group that probably half of my business comes somewhat directly or, and, and indirectly from, you know, that group or, and, or its members. That's um, awesome. And, and to be able to, and so I'm looking at, TikTok as a way to, when I asked the question earlier about monetizing, how do I, how can I pull them into kind of a TikTok feed where it's, it, it is, you know, maybe a live where it's more interactive, um, but also, you know, with, you know, with the short videos and, and integrate it back into design because there's, there, there's so much that is unknown uh, in, in, in that field. And there's so few people that are, that are doing it. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, Unfortunately, I see as a I work as a consultant, and I see a lot of batch plan, you know, botched plans that are someone decided that they wanted ICF and and the design professional, be it an architect, designer, draftsman, whatever, um, just did everything with with masonry and changed changed all the words to ICF for masonry, and it doesn't work that way. <laughs> but yeah. but yeah, and and it's so that's why I'm doing things like with you know I did something in Entre Architect. I'm doing another one with uh, with with our group here and to, you know, to build that understanding, but there's that old saying, if you build it, they will come. Uh, I, I think that what I said before about going to your target market and focusing on that will, uh, will make it, you know, you, you'll get those, those follows. Yeah. And the alternate construction methods on TikTok specifically crush like the panelized walls, ICFs, post and beam, the barn dominium stuff, like all that stuff does really, really well for whatever reason. I don't know, but um, yeah. And Facebook groups are yeah, their killer too. That's a really, really good way to reach people. Yeah. I've learned that. Um, unfortunately, my target audience seem to be design professionals. So I don't get a lot of design work from it. 
<laughs> yeah. So I did see that uh, John Jones had posted a book, um, They Ask You Answer by Marcus Sheridan, as a great resource for uh, content ideas, which I think is great. You know, just because somebody wrote about it doesn't mean we can't answer it on a video. Uh, it's yeah. it's great because sometimes you go through a book like that and you realize, wow, you know, I have heard this question 16 times and it never dawned on me because in my mind, it's just this is normal. Why would you not do that? Yeah. Um, and I have things like that all the time. There's times when I get on the Facebook group and I see questions and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I need to be doing that. Why am I not doing that? Oh, because every time I do a drawing, I do it automatically and I don't think about it, but I don't make it a process. So every once in a while, I'll miss this or I'll do that. Um, so I think that's that's important to have resources similar to that that you can go to and Especially on those days when you're just like, okay, I've got 16,000 videos up and I don't know what to put up now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like Adam probably has an issue with that. You know, <laughs> I don't do this well either, but like you can repeat yourself a lot and be fine. It's rare that people will get annoyed with it or uh, like people unfollowing you, unsubscribing is super rare. That's the point 1%. You don't need to worry about that ever. Um, yeah, that's cool. So, uh, Lori posted that, um, Crystal D. Bright presented at the Builder Show in the NKBA this year and went viral with her design ideas, and that she's inspiring. So, jump on the chat and find her and maybe follow her and get some ideas. Um, and, uh, does anybody else have anything? Well, I found my original uh, account that I never did anything with, and now I'm trying to log back into it. It's the cabinet gal, but um, <laughs> so I'm going to try to figure this out, get it, get it going, and devote some time to this. A little bit of time. I don't have too much time to devote to it. Yeah, Ethan posted his uh, his handle on there. And just so you all know, I am going to each one of them and following them. So. Yeah, I'm writing them down too. <laughs> if you hear me typing, that's what I'm doing. Um, I would say another thing too, like if you're worried about people being critical or negative comments, honestly, the negative comments are kind of rare. Um, there's a handful that stick out. <laughs> one guy said said I had a speech impediment. I I didn't think I did, but I might. I don't know. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> But, um, one thing I'd used to just diffuse that is be the joke. Like I'm fine. If they want to say something like, oh, this video is horribly framed or like, oh, sorry. You know, um, or I did a series of views videos of like things builders have yelled at me for, um, which just, you know, that's like a hand up. I made the mistake. We don't need to <laughs> yell at me again about it. Um, but yeah, if you're if you're comfortable being like saying, hey, my bad, um, or being the joke, being the butt of the joke, I've, that's helped me. <laughs> yeah, one of the things that I tell my customers, and I would, I'm going to do a TikTok on this, is when you get the first preliminary, look for the bedroom that does not have the door. Because <laughs> that's my, <laughs> it's become my trademark. I think I actually do it on purpose without realizing it. <laughs> yeah, I... Um... <laughs> Yeah, forgot powder rooms and laundry rooms, and mechanical chases. I forgot in a refrigerator one time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that. It's cold up there. <laughs> it's just for looks. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> it happens. I sent somebody the wrong design one time. Oh, like a it's, different client? Oh, oh yeah. I, I got both of them mixed up somehow. I don't know how. Even the Even the file names. I was like, how did I do this? And I sent each one of them. And you know, that one of them actually said, you know what? I like that house better. Can I get that one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm designing for two different Patels right now. So I oh, have to no. be very careful about which one I send. That's funny because I've designed for three different Patels. <laughs> yeah. uh, one of them was like a uh, an 8,000 square foot house. And the other two were additions. But yeah. It's... <laughs> and all of them were doctors. 
My boss one time sent over, um, that's when we used to use faxes to communicate. He sent through the drawings in a fax and he also didn't realize he had his cost sheet on the bottom of those drawings and he sent uh -oh. the cost sheets through too. <laughs> he had to call the customer and say, you're going to get some information that's just not for this project. Just please throw away page seven through nine. <laughs> 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 don't look <laughs> oh that's funny that's awful cool um got 10 minutes here i'm flying out later today going down to oh Texas. wow so awesome um yeah i gotta stop at 1 p.m eastern but any other questions no and it's fine if we have to stop a little early i think we've we've done a pretty good job of this um if anybody wants to uh talk more with with adam about this please make sure to message him uh you can get him on the uh uh facebook group um you can always contact me on the facebook group i can get you his information as well um it's usually fairly easy so yeah and i like john will know this because we're in mastermind together he's probably heard me say all this um, I like talking about this stuff way too much. So you I promise you're not bugging me <laughs> if you have questions <laughs> about it or want something clarified. So I your new handle, Fred. Okay. Um, Fred put his on there. Uh just so you know, um, I would love to see every one of you do a quick TikTok video on how much you like residential design professionals on Facebook. Just saying. I have so many ideas already. <laughs> <laughs> that one's like way down. <laughs> I, I'm going to see if I can uh, can do things, something like that. Did we get another question in here? Uh, it seems like everybody's putting on their... Um... ICF Design Pro. John, thanks for joining. Thanks for doing this. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's this was really helpful. Thanks, Adam. And this is awesome, Adam. Thank you for your time and, and, and efforts yeah. on this. Anytime. Thank you Happy much. to help. You've, you've inspired me to get going. It's about time I do this. <laughs> get after now it. Now that I found my old account, I've got to figure out what email I used with it and try to re re, re uh, reinvigorate it and do something. Yeah, re log in. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. So, I will like and comment on all your stuff. Yeah. Not so Rob, it. Rob, did, is that oh. just, that's just your brand new pro account, right? Yep. Just set okay. it up. Okay. Yeah. Five I'm your ago. first follower. <laughs> I get a prize. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we get together, a, a, a cold beverage on me. <laughs> oh, there you go. Awesome. Okay. Everybody. I appreciate it. Um, Thank you for coming. A few people have had to leave already and some are leaving. Um, we are about ready to end this and I will have this up uh, hopefully in the next day or two uh, on YouTube for a replay. Uh, I'll make sure that there's a link uh, in the guides in the group. So everybody have a wonderful day and thank you, Adam, very much. Uh, you anything are you very welcome. Say before we leave? Yeah. Uh, thank you all for jumping on here. Um, happy to share. Um, yeah. Have fun with it and I'll see you out there. All right. All right, everybody have a wonderful Thanks, day. Everyone. See y'all. Yep. Bye.